right now against the uh, U.S. and NATO forces uh, is happening because U.S. and NATO forces are there as uh, as occupiers. Um, I, you know, there are legal definitions of terrorism. I mean, someone who is plotting to uh, blow up an aircraft um, and is engaged in some sort of an imminent plot, I think, is quite clearly a terrorist. I think for many people around the world, uh, you know, drones used by the United States represent terrorism, and the people that authorize their use. Um, are, view as terrorists. I just think that it's it's all relative. And I, I wasn't, uh, uh, you know, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about people who are engaged in a legitimate, in a in, in a legally defined attempt at terrorism. And I think there have been very few what of about those Taliban in, in individuals killed. Uh, I would say that the Taliban, uh, when they're killing civilians in Pakistan, of course are terrorists. Um, you know, when you're blowing up marketplaces and you're targeting civilians and you're bombing religious institutions, of course that's terrorism. I was talking about the, the Taliban fighting against the United States and NATO in Afghanistan. Uh, clearly, those are terrorist actions. Um, as to the Mother Agnes issue, uh, my personal belief is that she is an apologist for the Assad regime. Um, I, I, I don't believe in censoring people. If, they, if, if there had been Syrian leftists that had been invited to participate in that discussion, and the point of it was to have a debate uh, you know, about uh, how the anti-war movement should respond to Syria, I think that would have been fantastic. When I inquired and asked if it is going to be a debate, no, it wasn't going to be a debate. It was meant to be a projection of a unified stance, and I don't agree with her stance. Um, I, I am 100% against the current U.S. intervention in Syria. It's not just about future intervention. Uh, the U.S., the CIA, is funneling weapons and money to various uh, groups fighting to overthrow the Syrian government. Uh, the, uh, I think that uh, Bashar al-Assad is a war criminal. I think he should be brought to justice. I think that there are multiple factions fighting against his government that have committed war crimes and should be brought to justice. That will never happen in any independent way until the United States stops blocking the creation of an international criminal court that would also have jurisdiction over American war criminals. So, I mean, I, 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 I'm totally against any outside involvement uh, in Syria from Russia, from Iran, from Hezbollah, from the United States, from Britain, from the CIA, from JSOC, all of them. I think that they should completely leave Syria alone. And I'm, I'm against it. But I, no, I'm not going to share a stage with someone that I think is a propagandist for a, a, a brutal thug. So I guess I'll very quick on the ter this terrorist point is that See, the reality is these are not black and white issues. I'm not saying that as a euphemism for being an apologia, but just to clear something up, that in fact, a lot of these groups that are being targeted, this is not just a reaction to American power. Someone in the audience uh, mentioned that there's the Pakistani Taliban. I think, for example, with the drones debate, actually has a negative impact in Pakistan domestically, because Pakistan has a very serious problem. And I'm saying this as someone who travels in Pakistan uh, has actually been to Pakistan Taliban held ter territory many times. That um, the drone debate becomes a way for Pakistanis to uh, sort of deflect attention from the very real and very huge challenges within. But if we use, for example, uh, the definition of a combatant, which is basically international law's way of defining a, a legal way that you can kill someone, um, you know, which is a very conservative definition. It's a definition that's been created by states effectively to give them quite wide latitude to kill people. I mean, the U.S. program is actually completely failing even that standard. And in fact, the U.S. hasn't actually provided us with any kind of definition of how it targets people. But the evidence is quite clear in my opinion, which is that in affected areas, they treat any military-age male um, as their enemy. And I think as Jeremy's uh, film shows, that in fact, in many instances, um, yes, there are real threats, but in fact, the way the U.S. goes about it, in fact, does not address those threats um, and actually can make things much worse. So I think that, in fact, if we look, if we want to really change things, we have to accept what reality is. And reality isn't just one thing about, you know, no one's a terrorist, they're all civilians. At the same time, there are threats, but there's a way we have to deal with that. And it's not just about eliminating people. There are social, political things that need to be confronted. Um, and, you know, addressing U.S. power is only one part of that. There's a local dynamic, which might be a completely different story. I don't think necessarily these are things that are in contradiction. Um, can I just say one quick thing, uh, just to 
for me, from my perspective, the worst possible thing you all could do after watching a film like this would be to engage in a kind of playground who is worse, who's the baddier of the baddies. Um, I think that's a mistake a lot of people on the anti-war side make, a lot of people on the left make. Uh, where, you know, it's not about, well, are, my, are our drones worse than the Taliban suicide bombs? The benchmark for what Britain or America or European countries should or shouldn't be doing in a war zone is not what Al-Qaeda or the Taliban or whatever is doing. And we sometimes get into these pointless arguments, especially people on the right, especially people on the pro-war side, who will say, well, drone strikes are, you know, if I, if I, if I go on television and object about drone strikes, the instant response from someone on the pro-war side is say, wow, what about the Taliban? And, you know, the point is, we shouldn't fall into that into that trap where we're measuring our own morality, our own ethics, our own standards in war by the kind of worst of the worst. The point about Jeremy's film, and Jeremy mentioned the point, and the point about things like Edward Snowden, and the point about all this stuff is measure it against our own values, whether it's you know the US Constitution, whether it's the European Convention on Human Rights, whether it's the UN Declaration on Human Rights. I mean, there are very important liberal values, Western values, whatever you, however you want to define it, universal values, hopefully, uh, which we can measure our ac actions against. And that's how we make a judgment, not based on, well, what, you know, is my enemy worse than me? Is my enemy's enemy worse than me? I think that's a very misguided road to go down when we're judging all these issues of war and peace. Jeremy, um, I think uh, we all know the room are in agreement that you're a hero, um, along with Edward Snowden, Glenn Greenwald, and everybody that's exposing what's going on uh, with this uh, so-called war on terror, which I think most people with their half a brain realise is an oxymoron, a contradiction in terms. Um, and I think the best way for me, I know, to get the word out is to post on Facebook Use all these things that are supposed to control us to, to get the word out there. Use Twitter, use Facebook, use social media to, uh, to take, you know, take, 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 the, take the war back to the people that are causing it, you know, and, and enlighten people. Um, just one other thing, I've noticed in Blackwater you mentioned about the, uh, uh, the religious aspect of the war that uh, has been uh, going around the world. Do you, do, do you ascribe to anything to do with the Illuminati? Do you, do you have any kind of uh, thoughts about uh, a new world order, an Illuminati kind of perspective on this? I, I am actually, according to Twitter, I am a member of the Illuminati. <laughs> I'm a leading member of the Illuminati and um, being paid by both George Soros, the CIA, and a uh, whole variety of others. Uh, I, it was hilarious. One day on Twitter I was being bombarded by people who were uh, on the right calling me uh, a supporter of Bashar al-Assad and then I was getting bombarded by others saying that I'm, uh, I am want the U.S. to intervene and bomb Syria and, and it was uh, sort of funny. No, I don't, um, I mean, the Illuminati, the New World Order, the Bilderberg, all that stuff, I mean, I, I'm, I'm about Investigating actual actions in the world, and I don't, I don't delve into that, uh, into that world at all. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be a reporter, um, and you know, I, I reject the idea that I'm a hero, and and I feel embarrassed or ashamed whenever anybody says that because, like, I know actual heroes um, who live in Somalia and Yemen or are missing right now in Syria, and you know, they don't have the option of leaving a war zone. It's their home. It's where they're from. It's why both books that I wrote are dedicated to non-Western white journalists because, you know, it's people like Abdel El Haider Shia who had to do three years in prison for exposing U.S. missile attacks. It's you know, my friend in Somalia who works for a major international news organization was not only shot in the leg and, and now walks with a permanent limp, but was stuffed into a secret prison in retaliation for filming operations of U.S.-backed forces that they didn't want filmed, and was put in there with people who were suspected of being members of Al-Shabaab, where they're bedbug-infested, no-oxygen prison, and he was put in there for his own journalism. Um, you know, the people who, uh, like Edward Snowden, potentially risk spending the rest of their lives in prison or being killed, um, I mean, those those people to me are, are heroes. I'm, I don't see myself as a hero in any sense of the term. Hi, um, I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit more about, um, I guess, the sort of privatization of policing and, and how the NSA is kind of, seems to be pervading, I mean, we hear so much about it in the news and, and media and stuff, but 
um, how in, we already know at University of London, the, there's student protests being uh, suppressed. Uh, in the United States, environmental movements are being suppressed. I mean, I don't come from a war zone, but my flat was raided the day after my housemate was arrested at an environmental protest in Britain. So I think, I mean, it's really important to kind of make the links between policing and the corporatization of that and perhaps militarization on a greater level, if you could comment at all. First of all, I, you know,